There's literally dozens of new solar panels, batteries, and inverters that have come out on the market in the past 18 months. But which one should we take seriously? Now, I've been in the solar industry for over 12 years, and I've helped thousands of homeowners go solar. And in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you my top recommendations for building the perfect solar power system using the best of today's technology. The smarter way to go solar. Hey everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge. And I gotta tell you, I've been really looking forward to making this video, building the perfect solar power system in 2025. I've owned five solar power systems myself and I've designed thousands more. And in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you if I had to do it all over again using the best of today's technology. Well, that's what this video is about. Now, the first thing you have to consider is which inverter platform you wanna be on. Now, for those of you who've been following the channel for a while, you know that one of the trends in 2024 and even more in 2025 is convergence of all major system components onto a single platform. And it's typically the inverter manufacturer that is the central point on that platform. So you have options like, of course, Enphase, SolarEdge, uh, of course, the Point Guard home battery system, uh, and others as well. But really the inverter is the first choice because the inverter platform is going to have the most impact on the functionality, scalability, and reliability of your solar power system. Now again, we're, we're not talking about just solar power now. We're talking about solar power, uh, oftentimes with integrated battery storage, but you also have other accessories that are gonna tap into and, and participate in your smart home energy management system. So what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about, first of all, things like EV charging, including bi-directional EV charging, meaning that when you have your electric vehicle plugged into the home, not only can you charge your electric vehicle using solar power or pulling through and using grid power, but with some of the new systems, you can actually, under certain circumstances, you can pull energy out of your electric vehicle battery to use to provide emergency backup power to the house, or in some cases, to sell back to the power company for a profit. You're also gonna have intelligent load control on some of these platforms. Now, when we talk about intelligent load control, this is basically the ability for your home energy management system to turn on or turn off certain appliances based on certain conditions. So for example, if you're running on emergency backup power and you're draining your battery, you wanna preserve your battery runtime, you could have the system automatically power off high draw non-essential items like electric stoves or electric water heaters. And that would help stretch your battery runtime for your more critical systems. Now there's also cases where you wanna use load control to avoid paying peak rates for your electricity. So for those of you who are watching from places like California, Arizona, certain parts of Texas, uh, you'll know that during certain hours of the day, you get charged a much higher on-peak rate than at other parts of the day. Now, typically these peak rate hours are during the late afternoon, early evening, when people get home from work, they plug in their electric vehicles. It also happens to be when the air conditioning is running the hardest during the summertime. So you could utilize an intelligent load control system to, for example, tell your, your home to draw energy from the battery during peak rate hours so you don't have to incur any peak rates from the utility. Uh, of course, many of these inverter platforms offer generator support as well. And so again, for those who've been following the channel for a while, you know that for those of you who are planning to run truly off the grid or you're preparing to set up your home to, to, to survive a prolonged grid outage, I recommend having an inverter system with a generator backup option. That way, if you hit a patch of bad weather and the solar panels can't keep up with recharging the battery, at least you have another option to fire up a fuel burning generator. Just run the generator for a few hours, bring your batteries back full, and then you can go back to running off your solar and battery system. Now, if I had to choose with the technology that's available today, my top two platforms are gonna be Enphase and Point Guard. Uh, of course, Enphase, famous for their IQ microinverter platform, uh, but Point Guard is a new contender here, and frankly, if I had to pick one of the two, I wouldn't gonna go with Point Guard, because you basically have everything you need there for whole house solar and battery backup in a single stack. You've got your inverter, your battery storage, bi-directional EV charging, load control, and generator support all integrated on a single platform. Now, the next thing you need to consider is what solar modules do you wanna use for your solar array? You know, there's a the misconception out there that solar panels are just a commodity and that all solar is the same. I mean, yes, in the sense that they all produce electricity. They're converting sunlight into electricity and then how you use that electricity is up to you. But solar panel performance can vary widely depending on your environment 
and your intended application. Now, the first thing practically that you wanna consider with your solar panels is the aesthetics. I mean, at the end of the day, folks, these panels are gonna be going on your house or they're gonna be mounted in your field. You're gonna be looking at them for the next 25 or 30 years. So you wanna choose a solar panel that looks decent enough or at least you're not offended by how it looks or you like how it looks on your house. Uh, of course, for residential systems, pretty much everything has gone to the all black on black panels. Black frame, black cells, and black back sheet. So when you look at the house, once the panels are installed, it should just look like a nice continuous sheet of black glass. Now, of course, the other thing you wanna consider is your price per watt on your solar panels. Uh, a lot of times the easiest way to compare systems apples to apples is to look at the price per watt. And, and the way you calculate that is very simply, take your total system price or your total quote price and divide it by the total amount of watts of your solar array. That'll give you a way that you can a little bit more easily compare quotes apples to apples to see what you're getting. But if you look underneath the hood a little bit, there are differences in how solar panels perform. So one watt in a certain brand solar panel is not necessarily gonna perform or yield the same amount of energy as one watt on a premium solar panel. So what are the, so, some of the differences in how solar panels perform? Well, one thing you wanna take a look at is the degradation rate. Now, solar panels lose a little bit of their performance over time as they age. And so the percentage of power that is lost for each year the solar panel is in service is known as the degradation rate. Now, a standard solar panel is gonna lose about half a percent per year over the 25 year life of the panel. And so in terms of, a, of an end of life guarantee, a standard solar panel is only gonna guarantee you about 85% of its initial rated power out in year 25. And that's pretty much what the industry has standardized on as a 25 year power output warranty. On the other hand, a premium solar panel could guarantee you 90% or more of initial rated power out in year 25. Premium solar panels only degrade at about a quarter of a percent or, or 0.3% per year, meaning that since the degradation rate is lower, a premium solar panel is gonna give you more total usable energy over the lifetime of the system. And at the end of the day, that's really what this is about, is how much total usable energy is this system going to yield for you? Of course, another thing you wanna consider, and this is especially for those of you who live in areas that have very hot weather during the summer months, is the temperature coefficient. Now, in addition to age reducing solar panel power output, when the solar panels have to operate in extreme high temperatures, they also lose a little bit of their efficiency. And so all panels are tested at what we call STC, standard test conditions, which is 25 degrees Celsius. But the panel will actually lose a small percentage of its power output for each degree Celsius above the ideal temperature where it has to operate. And so if you go with a solar panel that has a very low temperature coefficient, you're going to have less loss due to thermal inefficiency, which again, just translates to more total usable energy over the lifetime of the system. So especially for those of you in, in hot areas, whether it's California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Florida, you know, you're gonna see rooftop temperatures in excess of 150 degrees in the summertime. And so investing in a solar panel that has a low temperature coefficient, again, it's gonna give you more total usable energy over the lifetime of that system, which is a great time to introduce today's video sponsor, REC. If you're looking to get the maximum performance for your residential solar and battery storage system, then you need to take a look at the new REC Alpha Pure RX solar modules. REC solar cells are built using heterojunction technology, which is a combination of crystalline silicon and amorphous or thin film silicon. The result is a solar module with extremely high efficiency and industry low degradation rate, all while remaining price competitive. The low temperature coefficient and extra horizontal supports keeps the solar panel performing near peak power even in extreme weather conditions. REC stands behind its award-winning modules with a 25-year ProTrust warranty that covers power, product, and labor. So if you're serious about becoming energy independent, and you wanna get the best performance from your solar array, then tell your installer to use REC Alpha Pure RX. The 450 and 460 watt modules are available now at your local solar distributor. Thank you REC for supporting the channel and for sponsoring today's video. Now for me guys, if I have to choose for myself personally, I'm going with the REC solar panel, hands, hands down. The new version for this year is the REC Alpha Pure RX 470 watt panel. And again, I would pair that with the point guard 
uh, inverter and battery system to really round out my solar and storage solution. Now, the last thing you wanna consider, of course, is the battery storage component. Now, not all of you are going to have to use battery storage with your solar system. For those of you who live in markets that still offer one-for-one -one net metering, uh, if you wanna get the best payback on your solar and you don't need emergency backup power, you don't necessarily have to add battery storage to your solar system. But of course, the trend that we're seeing, led by California with this NEM 3.0, is that one for one net metering is going away. So if you wanna get the full benefits from solar, both in terms of financial savings and in terms of emergency backup and self-sufficiency, then you're gonna to wanna to, to to install battery storage with your solar. You're also gonna to wanna to consider what is your use case for the battery? Are you using the battery for emergency backup purposes? And if so, do you need to back up the entire house or is a smaller subset of just the most critical circuits sufficient? Uh, or are you using the battery to try to maximize self-consumption? Uh, again, maybe your power company no longer offers a one-for-one -one solar buyback, so you want to be able to self-consume as much of your solar energy as possible. Directly off solar during the day, charge the excess in the battery, run the house off the battery at night, and then the next day the solar panels take over and recharge the battery. So you've got self-consumption. Uh, you've also got peak rate avoidance. We talked about that earlier. If your power company charges you a super high rate of electricity during certain peak rate hours, you can program your battery to run the house during those hours to avoid incurring those peak rates. But typically it's your heaviest draw items in the house, like your air conditioning compressor, for example, that's gonna be drawing during those peak rate hours. So you need a battery that has enough power and storage capacity to run those heavy loads. And then finally, you know that there's virtual power plant programs starting to roll out now. And the virtual power plant programs essentially allows the power company to tap into your battery under certain conditions where maybe there's high demand on the electric grid. And in some of these cases, they're willing to pay you a high price premium for energy that you take out of your battery. I've heard prices as high as $5 per kilowatt hour for owners of Tesla Powerwalls in Texas that are participating in the virtual power plant program. Now, when it comes to batteries, of course, the first thing you wanna look at is power. Does the battery or does the battery inverter combination, is it able to put out the necessary output power to carry the loads in your house? Uh, if you're looking for a whole house backup solution, then you definitely want a battery that's gonna put out at least 10 kilowatts of continuous power. This is assuming you have a standard US home, look for a battery with at least 10 kilowatts continuous output power. Of course, the other thing you wanna look at is your storage capacity. Now, a typical US home consumes about 30 kilowatt hours of energy in a 24 hour period. That's everything, refrigerator, lights, all the appliances and electronics, as well as heating and air conditioning. So if you're looking for a true whole house backup and you want at least 24 hours of runtime, I recommend going with a battery or with a set of batteries that gives you close to 30 kilowatt hours of total storage. Also, consider the throughput and the warranty on the battery. Uh, for those of you who are gonna be using your battery every day for self-consumption purposes, make sure that the battery warranty is long enough where that if you're using that battery and you're cycling that battery every day, the battery warranty is gonna hold up as long as you need it. Um, again, this is mainly for daily use applications. For emergency backup, you're not gonna be cycling the battery that frequently, but if you're gonna be using the battery daily for self-consumption, make sure that you check not only the, the, the years on the warranty, but the total energy throughput, which is typically measured in megawatt hours, uh, the total energy throughput of that battery warranty. Another thing you wanna consider on your battery is do you wanna connect an AC coupled or a DC coupled battery? And of course, when we talk about AC coupled or DC coupled, we're talking about where does the interface between the solar system and the battery system take place? Does it take place on the DC side before any inversion uh, happens? Or does it take place on the AC side at the AC circuit breaker panel? The simple comparison here, guys, is basically high voltage DC power natively coming off your solar panels. That's gonna be the most efficient energy source to charge your battery because the battery itself is also gonna be typically a high voltage DC internally. However, if you need to retrofit battery storage onto an existing solar power system and you don't want to have to modify the existing system or void the warranty on the existing solar panels, then an AC coupled battery is probably your best bet and all that work can be done below the roof at ground level. So if I had to choose with today's solutions, if I was going with an AC coupled solution to add batteries to an existing solar system, I would definitely go with the Franklin whole home battery system. They just gave it a major upgrade. They now have each battery 
providing 10 kilowatts continuous power with surge up to 15 kilowatts. Of course, if I were to do it for a whole house, I would probably go with two of the new Franklin A Power 2 batteries. But if I were building this from scratch and I could choose one system, I would definitely go with the Point Guard Home System. With the Point Guard Home System, you get 11.4 kilowatts of continuous output power, and you can get up to 36 or more usable kilowatt hours of storage in a single battery stack and you get with that the generator support, the load control, and the bi-directional EV charging all integrated. So again, if, if, I, if, if, this, if this is Joe here, Joe has to build the best solar power system with today's technology. I'm going with REC solar panels. I'm going with Point Guard for my solar inverter as well as my battery storage system. I'm definitely gonna integrate the bi-directional EV charger. Uh, and I, I would have that option to add a generator support if I had to. If I was off grid, I definitely would do the generator. If I'm just doing grid tie with battery backup, I might forego the generator for now, uh, or just wire it up with an, uh, an inlet where I could plug in a portable generator if I had to in a worst case scenario. So this has been a discussion of how to build the best solar power system with 2025 technology. Of course, none of this matters if you don't choose the right installer. Uh, so if you haven't seen our previous video yet on how to vet solar installers properly, how to choose the right installer, go back and watch that previous video where we dig into that topic in more detail. But that pretty much does it for today's video. Uh, of course, if you're getting good value from these videos you watch on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Uh, and also go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get this over 100,000 this year. So giving us that subscribe really helps. Also keeps you up to date as, as all these new products come out. We're gonna have reviews and comparisons for you. So make sure that you don't miss anything. Now, of course, if you're a homeowner and you're in the process of looking at different solar and battery storage options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote, or maybe you already have a price quote, you just need to get a comparison to make sure that you're getting the best equipment and the right deal. Uh, as always, feel free to reach out to us on the link below here. You can set up a call with a solar surge expert uh, or just use the online calculator tool to see how much solar and battery storage costs in your area. Well, that does it for today. I thank you all for spending some more time on the solar surge channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.